Okay, cycling remains to be one of the most important part of my daily routine. It's one of the most economical source of transport I'm having right now. But one of the questions which I keep asking to myself, being a self-taught photographer, that uh, is it really important being a design student to go to a college, gain a skill, and eventually in the era of 2020, where a lot of online education is available and the quality is at par, and is online education is at par with offline education are they independent to each other or are they interlinked to each other to understand this very question i thought to get along with my friend prachi she has been somebody whom i've always looked up to because she really understand design and she even went ahead uh, to go to uk and go further studies and specialize into it and uh, got a lot of insights had a very fun conversation Accidentally, she's not very camera friendly, so make her a part of it in an active way. So I thought to point down the notes and share it with you all. So right now I'm off to my home, grab a lunch, and I'll catch you after that. This video is for anyone who is thinking or considering or want to understand if online education is for them or it's the offline education which they should opt for. And both have their own benefits. So this, this exchange of knowledge, both offline and online, has given the momentum of being really skillful at the comfort of your home. It's amazing to see how technology is just changing the face of education, the knowledge, the way we gain things, the way we share and exchange our ideas. And I think the journey has just started. Hi, my name is Shavona Karmakar, a freelance commercial photographer and a product stylist based out of Mumbai, India. To give you a background about my educational qualification, I did a year of foundation in design from MIT Pune, then I finished my graduation as a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Vishwabharti University, India. And online education has always been a very important part of my journey of being a photographer till date. Whatever I have learned so far from the skills, tips and tricks, photography, uh, aesthetics, design, color sets, composition, even the post-production, uh, online education has helped me to gain the knowledge which I needed to come to this part of my career. So before we get into the nitty-gritty of online education versus offline education, let's get our basics clear. Online education is a way of teaching yourself through pre-recorded, edited and scripted videos by very talented people sitting all over the world and you can gain this knowledge at the comfort of your own home and time. It's pretty pocket friendly too versus offline education is a traditional way of gaining knowledge where you have to go to a physical building, give attendance, interact with in-life professors and teachers and have a bunch of friends along the side of you who's going to help you to have some amazing memories which is going to last for the rest of your life. Okay, do you remember the very sneaky activity your parents used to do back in your kindergarten days? They used to make those false birth certificate because that educational institute has certain norms and terms and conditions to take you as a part of the alimony. Well, online education is so liberal. It just opens, like, welcomes you with two open arms. All you need is a digital device and an amazing pocket-friendly internet connectivity. Yeah! Online education is amazing. Online education is great. The quality of online education is, is for sure at par with offline education. But one of the biggest loops holes, loops holes, one of the biggest loophole of online education is the lack of required real life skills. The knowledge uh, regarding how to write a mail, how to communicate with people, how to deal with crisis and other factors is an integral part of offline education. Hence, till date, the traditional form of getting knowledge or is, is, is still one of the most famous and reputed way, hence we just go gaga with Harvard and Oxford. But what about online education? Well, in online education, it's up to you how you teach yourself, a lot of trial and error. And then you will say that, dude, even in offline, but that entire stretch kind of gets minimized. You don't spend up doing mistakes again and again because there are a lot of other people there are faculty which will help you they will give you a spoon feeding like just do this just do that don't do this don't do that uh, 
I, I personally, I have struggled because online education has just helped me with the skill required uh, to do good as a photographer when it comes to business. My entire knowledge came when I started acting as a freelance photographer, when I started talking to my clients in person, interacting with them in person while doing a shoot or maybe a pre-production meeting or maybe a post-production meeting. A lot of process uh, I learned in person and yeah, that's a real life story for a lot of people, but an offline education kind of helps you to understand those factors early in your life and makes it easy and helps you to minimize the mistakes which you could have done just uh, relying on yourself. One of the major reasons between offline and online education is the needed funds to support it. Well, a lot of people are not as lucky and they kind of feel they're missing out on the opportunity. Good news is online education also comes with the same quality. And in fact, it's really pocket friendly. I have learned a lot of retouching, editing and system customization skill for free via YouTube. And there are so many subscriptions available where you have to pay just for once and there's a lifelong access to it. And the, the subscription fees can be as low as three to 400 rupees a month. And the annual subscription can be as low as three to four thousand rupees a month. Wow, that's that's pretty affordable as compared to even school education, which is like rooftop. The beauty of online education is it just helps anybody to have an access to it. Quality education comes with a very premium price, but there are ways to think around it. Okay, there are multiple factors which you need to understand and consider before going for an offline education. Do you have enough funds to support? your program i'm just not talking about the educational fund but even the other expenses which will come along the way the living expenses your hand on pocket money if i have to be honest you have to understand the job and the employment opportunities available post completion of this project and the kind of money people at an average earn out of it now getting an educational loan from bank is pretty easy what you have to be careful about is what amount of time you require to get the money back. Don't turn that investment in the name of education a lifelong liability. Yes, it is. I personally have an experience with one of my friends who is under a huge educational debt and it breaks my heart. It do break my heart to see a talented person like him going all the way to the other part of the world to gain the knowledge and there is no employment opportunity which he thought it will be. This is one of the scariest things about offline education at this present point of time. Scholarship is there, but these are very limited. Okay, you have the needed funds to support your education, or if you're planning to take an educational loan, you have a plan to give it back. In short, you have a plan not to make that needed funds to support your offline education into a lifelong liability. But there's one important factor which a lot of people don't consider is the change. Are you ready for the change? A lot of people I know are born and brought up in one place for a long period of time, making them prone to homesickness, prone to nostalgia. There's a drastic change which you have to consider. You have to consider the linguistic change, you have to consider the gastronomy change, the climate, beliefs, myths, culture, people. And it's important to study all those factors even before considering if this university is for you. Because it's you at the end. Being an introvert and extrovert has nothing much to do with it. External factors affects us very, very precisely. Well, that's where the online education comes as a rescue because you get the education at the leisure of your time, at the leisure of your space. It's a very true say that you get what you pay for. Online education versus offline education. Offline education is one of the best ways to gain the knowledge at its core and you get to learn so many things plus the survival skills required in a short span of time and you're pretty focused during that period of, you know, whatever you have joined the course for. Whereas online education is completely, it depends upon you. It depends how much of time you can dedicate every single day or a week or it, it really depends how committed you are to it. To make the best out of it you have to make your own schedule you have to make your own time you have to make a priority commitment is what kind of makes and breaks if you're going for online education 
Coming at the end of this video, one of the most important question is, is online and offline education independent of each other? <laughs> the answer is they both are interdependent to each other. It's not important that your offline education is going to cover each and every aspect of your field of interest in detail and that's where the online education comes into rescue. A combination of an offline education with an online subscription where you need a basic commitment when it comes together becomes the most beautiful form of learning at this present point of time, gaining the knowledge from people who are in person plus people who are at the other part of the world. Take the advantage of it. The advantage of online education is it's pocket friendly, it's at the tip of your fingers. The only thing which you need access to basic internet connection. Offline education helps you with real life skills. Now it's up to you what you plan, what you decide. If you really think this video has made sense to you and it has helped you in some or the other way, please like and subscribe. I am Shobona Karmakar signing off and if you have any questions and if you want to add any of your views, please mention in the comment below and I will see you in the next video. Okay, okay, okay. Before I really bid goodbye, a very special thanks to my parents for believing in me that I can make a career out of this bizarre profession of creating images. Thank you for supporting my education and thank you for investing into my business. Special thanks to my dear friend Prachi Joshi. She is a freelance designer and a design alumni presently based out of Delhi, India. And thank you to all my friends, my colleagues, my workmates, my assistant, my production team for teaching me all the nitty gritties required to make a living out of this skill. And I don't think so I could have afforded any better university than this. Thank you so much for hearing me out. Thank you so much for hanging on to this long video of mine. And I'll see you in the next video.